SSR with Next.js and the ability to have APIs in my application are some of my favorite features of Next. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can protect SSR and APIs using Clerk. Here I have a Next.js application that has been set up with Clerk. Now, if you're unfamiliar with how to set up Clerk, click the link in the top right hand corner. It'll take you to a video showing you how to implement Clerk. So now we have this, we want to be able to one, protect this index page using SSR instead of using the client side components that we can use. And we also want to grab some data from a database. And in this database, we're not really going to use the database. We're just going to use an API. On top of that, we're going to want to mount our own components here. So instead of having components redirected to clerks, hosted versions, we're going to set up some route that will catch all for sign up and sign in. So from here, we're going to create a new folder and this new folder is going to be called sign in. And we're going to create another folder as well. And we're going to call that one sign up. And those two are going to be our basic sign in and sign up. Those are the ones we're going to need to make our app functional. So next we need to create our catch all routes. So for sign in, you need to do two square brackets and then do dot dot index and then close those square brackets dot js and inside of here we're going to import and we're going to import sign in and that's going to come from at clerk slash js now this is similar to what you may use if you're using those signed in signed out components then we're going to do const sign in page and then we're going to return in our function here, sign in, which is the component. We're going to tell it the path and the path is going to equal sign in. And don't forget to put a slash at the beginning. And then routing, we're going to have path routing and the sign up URL is going to equal slash sign up. So that will keep everything inside our application. Then from there, we can just export this out and we can actually just change these to set of parentheses instead. And then we can say export default sign in page. Now we have that one and we can do our sign up page. So we can do the exact same thing, dot, 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 index, and that'll be JS. And we can actually just copy this whole set of code here and drop it in, change sign in to sign up. And anywhere you see the word sign in, you're gonna to wanna to change to sign up. And then the sign up URL is now gonna be the sign in URL. And then we'll change that to sign in. And then we'll change our name here to sign up page. And hit save. So at this point, we actually have a way to redirect a user and also take in any parameters that come along with it. And if they're using OAuth, for example, there'll be some query parameters that we need to tell the user where to be redirected, all those kinds of things. So all of that is handled with these catch -all. So Now we have our catch -all, We should look at how we can implement our Next.js application with SSR. So Clerk has made this as easy as possible to make sure the user is actually signed in when they hit the page that's using SSR. So what I'll do first is I'll go ahead and import the function that we need. So it's going to be import with server side auth, and that's going to come from at clerk slash next.js slash SSR. So with server side auth means that we can then use that to verify that the user is actually logged into their account. So we can do that by doing get server side props equals with server side auth. So we're going to basically say with this server side auth here that we're importing, we're going to use that alongside get server side props and we're going to wrap our request in it. So from here, we can do an async request. And this async request is going to take in the request and resolved URL. Now the resolved URL is obviously the URL that we're currently at. So we can then 
check to see at this point if there is indeed a session ID. So we can do session ID equals request dot all. Now, if the user is logged in, there will be a session ID. So then we can do if there is no session ID, so no session ID, we can then go ahead and return. We can say redirect, and this will force the user to redirect. We can say destination, and we'll set the destination to slash sign in. So that's the route that we created here, the, the catch all route here, slash sign in, question mark redirect URL equals, and then that's where we've got this resolved URL. So we can do equals resolved URL. Then that will redirect the user back to wherever we want. So if we hit save here, we can just take a quick pause and think about how this works. So essentially what we're doing here is with server-side auth gives us ability to do certain things. Once we have that, we're going to make our regular async or function here. And we're going to check to see if there is a session ID by first trying to request it from the auth section of the session. And then say, if there's no session ID, we want the user to be returned to the sign in page and the redirect URL will redirect them back to whatever page they're on. So if this page was like superprotected.js, that's the page they would end up on. So we can go ahead and test this. Let's launch our application with yarn dev. And now yarn dev is started. Even though we don't have our app.js with like a signed in or signed out approach, what will happen is, is that this will run and see that, hey, there's no session ID. We should redirect the user back to the sign in page. So we should be on the sign in page. And as you can see, we are on the sign in page. So let's go ahead and sign in. We'll just use any random account here. And now we're being redirected back to local host 3000. So that part is working as expected. Then if you need to do something in here, let's say you need to request something from your database, you can go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and request something from Catfax while we're here. So we can do a wait fetch and then we can say HTTPS uh, catfact.ninja slash fact, and then we'll say const cat fact equals await request JSON. Then we can then go ahead and return our props. So we can just say return props cat facts and hit save. And, and now this should be returned if we need it in our props. So this kind of leads us to point number two, which is, hey, we also want to be able to use an API with Clerk and protect that route. So the user has to be logged in when they use this API route. So let's go ahead and essentially clear out everything in here that isn't inside the main and this H1 here. So let's get rid of all this. And we're gonna do something really, really basic in implementation but it will get the same idea and approach across. So let's import use state because that will just make life a bit easier. And we'll do that from React. And now we have use state, we can do const fact and set fact equal to use state. And then we'll do cat facts dot fact. Now let's make sure that we pass the props down from our SSR here. So now we can pass that in here and say cat facts. So now we're passing in cat facts and we're going to use that fact somewhere on our page. So instead of having this title from Next.js, which is boring, we can have a cat fact. So we can just say fact. So now we have this, if we go back to our application, Cats and kittens should be acquired in pairs whenever possible as cat families interact best in pairs. And if I refresh the page again, there's a new fact. And if we refresh again, there's another new fact. That's great. But now we want to get our own cat fact based upon if a user clicks a button. That would be the most appropriate option. And we'll use Next.js's API routes here to make this happen. 
So let's create a getFacts.js. Now this getFacts.js is going to handle two things. It's going to get us a new fact, that's obvious, but we're also going to protect this route and we're going to use something called require auth. So we can import require auth and that's going to come from at clerk slash nextjs slash API. Now inside of here, we can then do the usual, but instead we're going to wrap it again in require auth, similar to SSR. Then we can do an async function and we can do request response and we can handle the request if there was something in there. But for us, we're just going to get a new fact. So we do counts request equals await fetch HTTPS cat fact ninja slash fact and then we'll do const cat facts equals await request dot json and then finally const facts equals because we just want one fact await cat facts dot json cat facts dot fact and then we can do res status 200 dot json and then we can just return that fact so it'll be fact facts and at this point if we save this this route is protected now so we require that the user has a session and the session is valid before we will return any data so let's go back to our app here in here underneath our h1 let's create a button and this button here is going to have an on click. And this on click is going to equal an asynchronous function. And this asynchronous function here is just going to say const request equals await fetch and that API route. So it will be slash API slash get facts. Then we're going to wait for the results. So const results equals await request.json. And then we'll set the fact equal to results.fact. And then that will be our button itself. We'll say get a fact. And then we'll hit save. And as you can see, every time you click the button, now we get a new fact from the API, which is great. We know that all works now, but let's go ahead and log out. And now that we've logged out, we can now try hitting that API. So it's API says so get facts. And as you can see, immediately they get unauthenticated error. And if we look at this in the network tab here, immediately they get a 401 unauthenticated.